Ladies and gentlemen, 80 years ago today, Field Marshal Montgomery, Commander in Chief of the Allied Ground Forces, wrote in his message to all soldiers on the eve of D Day To us is given the honour of striking a blow for freedom which will live in history. And in the better days that lie ahead, men will speak with pride of our doings. Today we come together to honour those nearly 160,000 British, Commonwealth and Allied troops who on the 5th of June 1944 assembled here and along these shores to embark on the mission which would strike that blow for freedom and be recorded as the greatest amphibious operation in history. Those who gathered here in Portsmouth would never forget the site. It was by far the largest military fleet the world has ever known. Yet all knew that both victory and failure were possible, and none could know their fate. Aircrew flying overhead, sailors manning warships, or troops in assault craft battering their way through the stormy swell to the shore, whether dropping by parachute, landing in a wooden glider, or taking that terrible leap of faith onto the beaches. All must have questioned whether they would survive and how they would respond when faced with such mortal danger. The poet Keith Douglas, who was killed in action three days later, wrote of the embarkation. Actors waiting in the wings of Europe, we already watch the lights on the stage and listen to the colossal overture begin. For us, entering at the height of the din, it will be hard to hear our thoughts, hard to gauge how much our conduct owes to fear or fury. At this remove, eight decades later, it is a near impossible task to imagine the emotion of that day. The pride of being part of so great an enterprise. The anxiety of in some way not coming up to scratch. And the fear of that day being their last. I recently myself spoke to veterans who to this day remember with such heartbreaking clarity the sight of those many soldiers lying on the beach who drowned before they could even engage in combat. The stories of courage, resilience and solidarity which we have heard today and throughout our lives cannot fail to move us, to inspire us and to remind us of what we owe to that great wartime generation now tragically dwindling to so few. It is our privilege to hear their testimony, but our role is not purely passive. It is our duty to ensure that we and future generations do not forget their service and their sacrifice in replacing tyranny with freedom. Our rights and the liberty won at such terrible cost bring with them responsibilities to others in the exercise of that liberty. The Allied actions of that day ensured the forces of freedom secured first a toehold in Normandy, then liberated France and ultimately the whole of Europe from the stranglehold of a brutal totalitarianism. 
and as we remember with humility, pride and gratitude. Let us never forget that the soldiers who fought in the campaign launched from this place came from 30 nations from across the United Kingdom, the Commonwealth and allied countries, while elsewhere in Europe, allied forces continued to make vital progress in their successful Italian campaign. And while halfway around the world, at that same moment, the critical battles of Imphal and Kohima raged on in what was then Burma. The 1944 Victoria Cross Roll of Honor includes Sikh, Muslim, and Hindu soldiers. A reminder that events that year shaped our world then and the society we share today. While it was the frontline troops who faced the greatest personal dangers, the privations and sacrifices of war were endured by so many more. The Allied victory was a truly collective effort, born of the fortitude and hard work of those who remained on the home front, toiling in factories, under our land in the mines, out in the fields, or working in secret, men and women alike. Their collective industry, ingenuity and commitment helped our soldiers, sailors and airmen to prevail. So, as we give thanks for all those who gave so much to win the victory, whose fruits we still enjoy to this day, let us once again commit ourselves always to remember, cherish and honour those who served that day and to live up to the freedom they died for by balancing rights with civic responsibilities to our country. For we are all eternally in their debt.